mega metropolis kolkata expanding every day boosting population encroachments concrete jungles dazzle of led billboards bottlenecks of traffic snarls over 1 crore inhabitants squeezed in between 90 square kilometers area but as a saving grace on the eastern boundaries of the city for over centuries exists a vast blue expanse the east kolkata wetlands a silent sea which quietly purifies the city flushing filth out of city system and cleaning its air as well as providing its regular daily need of palatable fish and vegetables a reservoir of rich biodiversity the wetlands are considered to be one of the most essential ecosystems of the world with a greater extent of productivity and directly associated with the sustainability and the survivability of the human beings the wetland is considered as transition zones between the terrestrial and the aquatic habitats and signifies a unique ecosystem which is dependent on the dynamics of water supply both inflow and outflow that is the input of the water supply and the loss of water from the habitat the east kolkata wetlands or ekw are profoundly known for its unique characteristic of sewage fed wetlands which are naturally nourishing the pisciculture as well as agricultural activities and in turn enhancing the livelihood of the people around it to a great extent the man made wetland undreamt of and serving enormously to the ecological balance of the entire city of the metropolis of kolkata these these wetlands are considered as a kidneys of kolkata kolkata which is known to be an extremely populous and inhabited metropolis has this wetland which serves as not only as a lungs for the city but also as a kidneys for the city because of the vast expanse of open area which is in and around the wetland The East Kolkata wetlands, a complex of natural and man-made wetlands covering 12,500 hectares, swamps and marshes, sewage farms and fishing ponds. History tells us that the wetlands were created by a natural shift of the river Vidadhuri, a tributary of the Ganga. The earliest known account in the year 1748 of this area portrays it as a marshy salt lake teeming with fish and birds. In later years, the tidal flow of saline water in the salt water lakes receded, which altered the aquatic environment from saline to fresh water in due course of time. East Kolkata wetlands which is uh, one of the important wetland of the India this wetland has been notified on 2002 under the Ramsar convention in 1983 East Kolkata wetlands got its name christened by late Dr Thrubujuti Ghosh Special Advisor of Agricultural Ecosystems Commission on Ecosystem Management of the IUCN Visionary late Dr Ashish Kumar Ghosh former Director Zoological Survey of India was also instrumental in the conservation and protection of the East Kolkata wetlands The East Kolkata wetlands were designated as a Ramsar site a wetland of international importance 
under the Ramsar Convention on August 19, 2002. Out of the 27 Ramsar sites in India, the East Kolkata wetlands is one of the two Ramsar sites in the state of West Bengal. East Kolkata wetland lying along the eastern fringe of Kolkata covers an area of 14,500 hectares. Out of this 3,500 hectares are really wetland. The wastewater generated from Kolkata is largely diverted through some canals. This wetland uh, recycles this wastewater. This is a science or technology which was invented by the local farmers and internationally recognized system because they have utilized the bright sunlight and the low-lying land to not only to use this water for irrigation but also they have invented a unique technology of purifying it. East Kolkata wetlands serving as a natural refinery and a sieve of Kolkata metropolis, taking care of more than 80% of the metropolis's sewage. Being the largest wastewater-fed aquaculture system in the world, where the sewage is recycled for PC culture and agriculture. This East Calcutta wetland is an unique example how the hazard of urban waste can be transformed into an asset. Because this sewage water is a source of fishery, this East Calcutta wetland produces not only the regular IMC that is Rohu, Katla and the Mrigal, but some diversified species like Monosex tilapia, Pangasia suchis, uh, even the Bengali delicacies like Pabda, Magur, Tangra, all the fishes are being cultured in the sewage fed fisheries of East Calcutta wetland. And actually the fishery model of East Calcutta wetland is an accepted model. This East Calcutta wetland model now been transformed into some other uh, mega cities of the country. A project is named Nolbon Fisheries Project. Rajya Motsa Unna Nigams, the State Fisheries Development Corporation. Ayotane Sarbo Bihot Project Aita. এবং এখানে সর্ববৃহত পরিমাণ মাছ উৎপাদন হয় এই জলাশয়ে মাছ ধরে আমাদের জীবিকা নির্বাহ চলে এই ভাবে আমরা মাছ ধরে আমরা প্রজেক্টে তুলে দেই প্রজেক্টে এবার বিভিন্ন মার্কেটে বিক্রি করে এবং কি এখান থেকে বাজারে বাজারে স্টল গুলো হয় তাও এর থেকে সর্বাহ করা হয় ইস্ট কলকাতা ওয়েটল্যান্ডস অ্যাক্ট অ্যাজ আ কার্বন সিঙ্ক এন্ড ক্লিন আপ দ্য সিটিজ এয়ার 60% carbon is sequestered in the soil and biota, which is plant and animal life of the East Kolkata wetland ecosystem. Experts say that if this 60% carbon is not stored by the East Kolkata wetland, then it would have prevailed in the atmosphere, adding to Kolkata's pollution level. It was the turn of the 19th century. Founder Director of the Zoological Survey of India, Dr. Thomas Nelson Annandale found this wetland as an asylum for several faunal groups and initiated the Faunal Diversity Studies on East Kolkata wetlands. As far as East Kolkata wetland is concerned, JSI has been undertaking the survey of uh, this wetland for last more than one century when Dr. Thomas Nelson Allendale was the director. He surveyed the area and this site was known as a Salt Lake area. Since then, JSI has been undertaking the survey of uh, East Kolkata wetland, which is very, very significant as far as this area is concerned.
the scientists of Zoological Survey of India have regularly undertaken faunal studies and recorded 248 species of birds from the area. Many migratory birds have also been reported. Faunal studies report the presence of 17 species of zooplankton, 6 species of crustaceans, 21 species of aquatic insects. Fifteen species of mollusks, seventy five species of butterflies, thirty seven species of fishes, four species of amphibians, nineteen species of reptiles. and 16 species of mammals. During 1965, even the one of the mammal species that is uh, Mars mangooch was uh, described by the Zoological Survey of India scientist. JSI is going to compile the entire information of the faunal diversity of the East Kolkata wetland and we want to bring out a consolidated information of the fauna of this area. ZSI has initiated to compile all existing information about the East Kolkata wetlands as well as collecting the further details and exploratory surveys in order to document the faunal diversity of the East Kolkata wetlands. This initiative has been initiated by the Zoological Survey of India long time ago. Uh, it was possibly initiated by its first founder director, Dr. Thomas Nelson Annandale. It was taken forward by Dr. Ashish Ghosh much later down the years and after a long span of say 40 years, the Zoological Survey of India at present has again taken up the initiative to document the faunal diversity of the East Kolkata wetlands and also to make a kind of ground truthing on the status of the species which is now available in, in and around the East Kolkata wetlands as opposed to the ones which were available before. This unique initiative will be of huge importance not only to the researchers, the scientists and the students of biodiversity research but also will have a major role in allowing the policy makers in order to make a proper assessment of this Ramsar site. But this natural protector of the mega city is under serious threat. The Eastern Metropolitan Bypass and flyovers have improved connectivity of this region, triggering off the unplanned growth of many high rises, all to the serious opposition from concerned environmentalists. Due to the shrinkage of the East Kolkata wetlands, flooding during the monsoon months may be one such drastic effect on the township of Kolkata.
we must take immediate steps to protect and preserve this precious wetland which is the best example of sustainable sanitation system powered by traditional knowledge of the community and existence of rich biodiversity the only one in the world that has expunged the need of conventional and costly water treatment plants in a mega city the future of the city of joy kolkata depends heavily on the existence of the east kolkata wetlands we all must work in unison towards its survival save and preserve the east kolkata wetlands in its true natural elements conserving the rich biodiversity